we welcome our audience on ESPN2. Six minutes in here at the Stop Up Centre. Start of World Cup year for the United States, and it got off to the perfect start as well with Chris Wondolowski's goal after just four minutes. The US, one goal to the good against South Korea and looking for more immediately. Adrian Healy with Taylor Twelman, Alexi Lalas and Monica Gonzalez here. And uh, Taylor, this is a golden opportunity on a golden afternoon for players who are somewhat on the bubble of the United States national team picture to really state their case. Well, and Adrian, a January camp in a World Cup year, it's just, it's a different vibe. You can feel it in the stadium right now, and you're looking at two countries in the identical situation, roster full of domestic players that are really trying to impress their coaches for that ticket to Brazil. The United States have come up flying seven minutes in. The end of a three-and-a-half-week camp, this one, for Jurgen Klinsmann, who took his squad to Brazil. They got to uh, test out their facilities that they'll be using in the summer in Sao Paulo. It's met with a huge thumbs up all around. A lot of training sessions leading up to this one game, this one chance to shine. And already, Chris Wondolowski has stated his case, but uh, the US will have some defensive work on their hands here. The corner owned by Lee Kyun Ho. He's one of the more experienced members of the Korean squad here. The squad primarily drawn from the domestic K-League. We saw it Wednesday night, Adrian, against Mexico. This is one of the strong suits of this South Korean roster. Very good on set pieces. Well, they have a huge six-foot-five striker as well. Kim Shin-Wook. Watch out for him. He wears number nine. This is Park with the corner. The flick on, and Romando just kept it the right side of the line for the US. Now the near post flick caused some havoc here. Such a good ball from Park jong woo near post. How good is this from Nick Romando? Any questions about needing goal line technology? <laughs> we will see it this summer, Taylor. Well, he reacted very quickly, didn't he? Just putting the ball the right side of the line, but did it go over the line? There won't be any doubting in Brazil. We have an incident like that. The, uh, the alarms will sound. The referees will know within a matter of seconds whether the ball has crossed the line. Nick Romando breathing a sigh of relief. The oldest member of this United States squad winning just his 13th cap. Well, and coming off a career best 6-0 and as a starter in 2013 with the U.S. Great reaction save on the goal line. South Koreans just starting to spread their wings for the first time. A little shell-shocked, I'm sure, by the lifts that the United States put on them early on. And in case you missed it and you weren't with us on ESPN3, this was the goal in the fourth minute. Well, we saw this Wednesday night against Mexico. South Korea struggles with wide play. This is a great position from Graham Zuzzi. Better run from Brad Davis, but Chris Wondolowski has made a name for himself in MLS and be in the right spot at the right time. Great early start from Chris Wondolowski in the United States. Wondolowski, as I mentioned, scored six goals in the space of eight days during the course of the Gold Cup this past summer. Brad Davis, who's had an energetic start to into Donovan. And Donovan in a promising position. Let's bring you the starting 11s for both teams. For the United States, uh, well, Michael Parkhurst, who was a late addition to this squad, Taylor, getting the start at left back. Yeah, Michael Parkhurst, Brad Evans, coming off career years with the U.S. team, respectively. Big test today, dealing with the transition of South Korea. Brad Davis, mixed Diskarud, vital roles in World Cup qualifying. And then up front, listen, the questions were about Chris Wondolowski. We've seen goals against Belize, Cuba, Guatemala. Can he score against a World Cup opponent? Well, guess what? We give him four minutes in the answer. No, Eddie Johnson in the starting lineup. He's been uh, carrying a quad strain and also a late scratch off the roster sheet from Mike McGee dealing with fruit poisoning. Yeah, terrible luck for Mike McGee. He's been called into his first in a, uh, U.S. training camp. Uh, MLS MVP. And able to play any part today. Rambunctious challenge from Kyle Beckerman. On the back of Go Johan. Beckerman, who was overlooked 
four years ago for South Africa, having made his debut back in 2007 for the United States. Speaking this week, he obviously thought his chance had passed him by Taylor when that, that World Cup came and went without him. But he's become a mainstay for Jurgen Klinsmann. Jung Sung Ryong is very much the number one goalkeeper for South Korea. It's his first start of this three game tour for them. Here's Wondolowski looking very much in the mood. Now Zusi. Donovan. Fluid US move with Evans on the overlap. Evans' cross is a decent one. Discarouge. Well, he was dancing, but he couldn't get the shot away. And now Korea on the counter-attack. It's Kim Min-woo leading the charge. And Omar Gonzalez is the safety valve for the US. Next Discarude was right on the doorstep. Become a favourite, hasn't he? Of Jürgen Klinsmann's. Starring performances again in the Gold Cup over the summer. And now, some defending to do. It's Kim Min Woo making progress again down the left. And they reset South Korea. This is Lee Yong. Right back. Lee Kyun Ho with the cross. And they have a six foot six target man to aim for, do South Korea, in Kim Shin Wook. He will be a handful for Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasley, to say the least. First meeting between these two nations since they met at the World Cup on Korean soil back in 2002. Game that finished 1 1. Finished it. That way, courtesy of a goal from Clint Mathis. Interesting, really. Two nations whose World Cup fortunes have followed similar paths since that meeting. 2002, the High watermark semi final for Korea, quarter final for the US, group stage exit for both in 2006, but both went out in the first knockout round in South Africa. And now the United States have their seventh consecutive World Cup appearance to look forward to for South Korea. It's their eighth. And over the last 20 to 30 seconds, I think this is the test today for the United States, Adrian. When you look at it, South Korea very disciplined. They'll hold their ground, they'll hold their lines. Can the United States keep possession? And then most importantly, when that ball turns over, how good are they defensively in transition? Here's Michael Parkhurst. Back in MLS. Play with the Columbus crew and the new season opens up. And that was a foul on the, the MLS Cup winner, Graham Zussi. Two starters from the Sporting Kansas City, two from the LA Galaxy, two from Real Salt Lake. So you see another who's uh, coming to his own courtesy of these January camps. His was back in 2012. Well, that's kind of been the trend under Jurgen Klinsmann. 2012, we saw Graham Zuzzi, 13, we saw Matt Beasler, Brad Davis. This year, I don't know, being a World Cup year, I don't know he wants to introduce that many new faces. Davis with that left foot curling it in towards Gonzalez. Back in from Donovan. But no one able to really attack the ball. Let's uh, take a look now at our Continental Tire Analyst Corner. See who Taylor has his eye on today. The United States is 12-1-3 when mixed disc group plays. But today, Adrian, it's less about the game result and more about the effort and the effect mix has on this game. In moments like Mexico and Columbus, he can be a very special player. But the question is, can he do that from the opening whistle? And again, just a reminder, this was uh, pretty much an all-MLS camp for the United States. One exception was Mix Discaru, the only European-based player, plays in Norway with Rosenborg, everyone else playing in MLS. All the big uh, European names were left out. This not being an official FIFA date. And that will be a handball against Matt Beasler.
most experienced Korean operators, Lee Kyun Ho, who scored five goals in World Cup qualifying for South Korea, who really only squeezed in at, at the last moment. They finished second in their Asian qualifying group behind Iran, who they lost to twice. They only finished ahead of Uzbekistan on goal difference to qualify for Brazil. FIFA has South Korea ranked at number 53 currently in the world. And officially, they're one of the lowest ranked teams going to Brazil. United States at 14 currently. I don't think we can stress enough, though, Adrian, how important this friendly is against a quality opponent. How often after January camps, we're out here at the Home Depot Step Up Center, we're sitting here looking at either Sweden, Denmark, Norway, they're bringing in their B teams because they're in the offseason. To get an opponent like this in an atmosphere like this in the January game, going into World Cup, great test today. This is uh, Lee making great progress. Real danger here for the U.S., but then Lee blows his chance. After all that hard work, Lee Kyun Ho couldn't apply the finishing touch. No, oh, but this is the dynamic Lee Kyun Ho up front. Kim Shin Wook. Lee Kin Ho, very good at finding those seams and using those seams to get at center backs. Has to do better with that final product. 60 caps and 18 goals for Lee Kyun Ho, making him the most uh, experienced member of this Korean squad. Gonzalez. talk about Kyle Beckerman and other players not making the 2010 World Cup roster Lee Kin Ho was another one of those yeah played most of the World Cup qualifiers going into South Africa and ended up not making that final roster Donovan Beckerman uh, seeing Davis slip in front of him another collision involving Kyle Beckerman third and a fourth member of our broadcast career at the Home Depot Center. Let's hear for the first time from Alexi Lawless. Alexi, what are you looking for today? Well, guys, I'm watching this game in the context of, of this summer, and that last chance that South Korea had, I couldn't help but say, Ghana scores that, or Portugal scores that, or, or Germany scores that. A loss of possession, an easy loss of possession, as the U.S. is coming out of their back, trying to maintain that composure and, the, and, and that possession, playing out of the back, and then they lose it, and then a guy gets beat, and then there's a chance. Now, South Korea didn't score there, but you get to that group this summer, yeah. and the teams will make you pay. And, Alexi, coming into this game, you were you wanted to watch Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasler, and I think of tracking Omar Gonzalez is tracking Kim Shin Wook. It's very important that that communication with Matt Beasler and Omar Gonzalez is there starting today. Absolutely. And as I said, I'm looking at the guys that I think are going to be there come that first game this summer in Brazil. Yes, there's some guys that maybe will make the roster, but how does that back line especially react? What kind of composure do they have coming out of the back? I talked to Tab Ramos, the assistant coach for the U.S., and he said that these guys are going to be put under pressure today. And how they come out of the back, which is something that they've worked on, is important because they are going to use that this summer. And certainly, uh, listen to the United States coaching team. They have a great deal of respect for the way South Korea approached the game. High energy pressing game. One of the reasons Jurgen Klinsman selected them as an opponent, he told us yesterday. Sam Zami, a great voice. Simply perfect afternoon here in Southern California. Perfect start to the game. Provided by Chris Wondolowski, but it's been a lot more even since that point. 20 minutes in now. And we've actually seen Graham Zuzi and Brad Davis switch sides in the midfield. And I think it's caused a little bit of a problem in front of Brad Evans and Michael Parkers because now Brad Davis being on the right hand side, he wants to tuck in and use that left foot. The United States defensively have lost a little bit of their width. Gonzalez and Beasley have since then yesterday really relishing the task ahead of them, battling with the huge Kim Shin Wook. 
Haven't seen too much of the towering number nine just yet. Well, and I don't think it's playing against a big, tall center forward like Kim Shin Wook. That is the problem for Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasler. It's dealing with the runners that are running off yeah. of them that are very dynamic, finding those spots. That come Ghana, come Portugal, come Germany, that's what you're going to see this summer. And now the jet healed Go Johan. Well named, isn't it? This is Lee Young. Surveying the scene. Good looking cross, too. Great header away. Gonzalez and now uh, Zussi can look to build a counter puts the brakes on momentarily and then Donovan runs into trouble good tackle from mixed Discaru won the ball cleanly left part John Wu on the ground and now Discaru turning his attention to attack Zussi Zussi can be argued to help not just the United States but Mexico to qualify as well. San Zussi is now known south of the border. Great goal against Panama. Save Mexico. It's probably safe to say he'll have free vacations to Mexico for the yeah. next 30 years. Yes. He certainly ought to. That barnstorming start, as he mentioned. The United States have just gone a little more bogged down now. Now the long ball may open things up. Indeed, it has. Zussi is on his way. Didn't cross it first time. Now looking far post, but that's beyond the range of Wondolowski. We talk a lot about Graham Zussi with Sporting KC being a dynamic player, but he can also get short and get in behind and use his speed, Adrian. He does a wonderful job of setting up that defender, making eye contact with his club teammate, Matt Beasler, and getting in behind. Great run from Graham Zuzzi. Third member of Sporting Kansas City is here. Uh, Benny Fellharbor, who's on the bench. Michael Parkhurst had a great time playing with Norshelland in Denmark. Not such a great time in Germany with Augsburg and now back in MLS. Playing at left back. Connecting with Donovan very smartly. You hear that about Parkhurst all the time, Taylor. What an intelligent player he is. And you played with it. First hand experience of that. When you talk about his time in Europe for over the last five, six years, he's been playing right back. But this is the third time in the U.S. uniform we've seen him at left back. And one of those was a big World Cup qualifier in Kansas City versus Jamaica. And the last defender of the year in 2007 was Parkhurst. He was also an all-star as a rookie back in 2005 with the New England Revolutions. Monica Gonzalez is the fourth member of our broadcast crew. She has more on Parkhurst. Adrian, I had a chance to ask Michael Parkhurst if he had any pressure from Jurgen Klinsmann to try and stay in a club in Europe, and he said no, he didn't. It came down to Denmark and Columbus crew at the end, and Jurgen was just as positive about both, both clubs. He also said he has an understanding with Greg Berhalter that long term he will be playing center back with the Columbus crew, but if, if between now and the World Cup, he can play some outside back, and that will get him better opportunity to play in Brazil. That will benefit both club and country, and Greg Ber Berhalter is willing to do that. Adrian? Thanks, Monica, as Wondolowski delivers the cross. Kim shin -Wook with the layoff. And to go back to Parkhurst, it's really only a year ago, just a little more that we Seeing him playing in the Champions League for Norseland against the likes of Chelsea and Juventus and doing well. Played a couple of his games for the uh, Danish champions. That's going to be a corner earned by Parkhurst. And Davis trotting upon across to take it. Native of Cranston, Rhode Island. Michael Parkhurst. Davis, the 
age of 32. This is 13th cap tonight uh, this afternoon. It's a good service towards Gonzalez. Lee Kun Ho, we've already seen his attacking capabilities. And Donovan was more than aware of them. Came charging back there. The US captain. Oh, and that is the strength of the South Korean side. Is exactly in transition. The moment that ball turns over, can they get their outside backs, their outside wingers getting forward? Great recovery from Landon Donovan and Michael Parker. Oh, what a year. 2013 was for the United States who won the hexagonal for the third straight time and won their fifth gold cup Record amount of wins and goals is Wondolowski And Donovan who are a big part of that mix Zussi met with a thundering challenge there from Kim Jin Soo 16 games last year the US 2.2 goals a game both of those team records for a calendar year a year that was bookended by scoreless games though against Canada in January and Scotland and Austria in November you know it's amazing Adrian to think that today is the first time Landon Donovan and Graham Zuzzi have started together it's the first time and so much talk we hear about the U.S. roster for Brazil is Graham Zuzzi and Landon Donovan competing for the same spots. I don't know if that's the case. Yeah. Because we saw last year Donovan playing underneath Robbie Keane more as a center forward. The reality is, come May, there may be a battle between Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey for that same spot underneath that center forward. It's really interesting you say that, Taylor, because it's a situation that would have before unthinkable uh, going back a couple of years. Donovan and, uh, keen to stress his flexibility, the different roles he can now offer the US. What would be his fourth World Cup? It's interesting, Donovan has played five times more minutes in World Cups than the entire rest of this United States squad in this training camp. Beasley down the line. Shielded away from Donovan. Evans inside, Discarud. Worked very effectively from left to right. Evans arriving. Now can he provide the cross? Driving to the byline, Evans! Well, it was near post and was easily handled by Jorn. Let's bring in Alexi Lance. Alexi, I know you wanted to follow up on that point about Dempsey and Donovan potentially battle. Well, I'm just interested in what Taylor would say. If, if Clint Dempsey was here today, where would he play and who would he replace in this 11? Because we talk about this summer, the players that are going to be here. I'm just, I'm just curious, Carol, who do you think he would, where do you think he would play? I'll come back to that because Gonzalez has to pull down the defensive clamps. Stymie this Korean attack, which was promising for a moment there. Well, let's see, I look at the success of the U.S. team in the 2010 World Cup. That success coming back against Algeria, Slovenia, that came when Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey were up front together. They're both on the field at the same time for me. Today's game, Graham Zuzzi, Landon Donovan wide. Brad Davis steps off. Clint Dempsey's underneath Chris Wondolowski. And that's not to say Brad Davis is not on the roster, but for the starting the game today, you got to have Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey on the field together. You think there's a chance come this summer that Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey aren't starting together? Yes. Free kick here to South Korea. And again, they have Kim Shin Wook. It's the obvious target. It is towards the number nine, and well, Gonzalez had to take uh, evasive action there. Remember, might not have got there. Gonzalez did with Kim Shin Wook lurking just behind him. This is so good for Omar Gonzalez because that high line. Listen, you put the onus on your goalkeeper to come off his line, but you have any doubt in your mind he can't get there. 
you win that ball. Well done from Omar Gonzalez. Gonzalez winning his 17th cap today. Made his debut in the first game after South Africa in that friendly against Brazil. That was out in the cold for a couple of years. This Park's corner. Armando did get a touch on that this time, but it's one back. Lovely bit of work away from Davis. And now Beckerman completing the clearance. The United States with all hands on deck defensively. And holding the Koreans at bay. Not often, Adrian, do you see the United States, States matched man for man on set pieces. Today, they got their hands full. That's just the start of a World Cup year, big year here on ESPN. Our next big date, Wednesday, March the 5th, we'll have a triple header for you. The United States' next friendly will be away in Kharkiv against the Ukraine. That will be followed by Spain against Italy, and then finally, uh, Mexico against Nigeria on ESPN News. Make a date with us on Wednesday, March the 5th. The US with one more friendly after that to come, we think, in April, Taylor, and then the squad announcements in mid-May to be followed by three more send-off games. So really, the uh, urgency is acute. Wow! Didn't see a foul there, Taylor. I take it you didn't either. No, and we so often hear Jurgen Klinsmann talking about that center forward being the first line of pressure. It's a little thing, but Chris Wondolowski just pressuring from behind, putting pressure that allows Landon Donovan and Brad Davis to come in there. Unlucky. Brad Davis so often thought of as uh, underappreciated. I know his uh, club manager Dominic Kinnear views him that way almost. As if Davis is taken for granted sometimes. Kim Shin Wook winning that aerial duel against Gonzalez, his Go Johan. Lee Young. This is Lee Hall giving it a go and not comfortable enough for Nick Romano. Lee Ho, who uh, played three World Cup games in 2006 for the Koreans. The United States have only beaten South Korea once in six previous meetings. That was prior to the 2002 World Cup, the Gold Cup meeting. It's down the road from here in Pasadena, where Landon Donovan was on the score sheet in the 2-1 win. Donovan and Demarcus Beasley, who isn't here, the only survivors in the current national team pool for those that played South Korea in the World Cup in 2002. A bit of pinball just outside the penalty area, finally cleared by Parkhurst. Stolen away by Kim Min Woo. He's done well. And that was a desperation slide from Beasley. Brad Evans got beaten at the byline. Well, the biggest concern for Jurgen Klinsmann coming into today is the initial pressure from South Korea. And Kim Min Woo does a wonderful job against Brad Evans. And then Matt Beasley, the only thing he can do is cover that near post in the right spot at the right time. Another corner for the United States defense to try and deal with here. Swung into the far post. Again, it was Kim Shin who was the target. Gonzalez. Just awaiting uh, Nick Romando's arrival. Ten minutes to go in the first half here at the Stop Hop Centre. There's uh, Ong Young Ball, who knows this arena well, played here for two seasons alongside Alexi Lalas for the uh, Los Angeles Galaxy. He took over actually after World Cup qualifying had ended for South Korea. It's back in June. South Korea's all-time 
leading Caps winner. Hong Young Ball. Well, listening to his press conference, and we talk about the missing players today from the United States and the missing players from South Korea that are in Europe, are most attacking players. I think his biggest concern going to Brazil is at the center back position. Do they have quality at center back to deal with good attacking teams? I think that's his biggest concern. Guys, you talk about Hyung Young Bo when he came to the Los Angeles Galaxy, when he came to MLS. What an absolute gentleman. Obviously, the soccer part uh, was there, but we actually had some good times. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that I have dined with that man <laughs> in South Korea. Guess what we had, Taylor? <laughs> I'm not guessing. Mind is racing. We had dog. You did. Yep. Went out and had dog with him. Did you know you had dog? Of course. I asked him. I said, look, if we're going to go there, I want you to take me to the best possible place. And he did. And it was fun. We had a good time. Good story. Yeah. He's got it onto Evans. Well, Hongman Bo and Jürgen Klinsmann have a, a history too, Alexi. They, they faced each other, the two managers today faced each other on the field at a World Cup back in 1994. I'm sure you remember that game. It was an epic game in Dallas where Jürgen Klinsmann scored twice for Germany. Hong Young Bo scored for South Korea and Germany were clinging on at the end. And that was ultimately a 3-2 win in about 100 degrees. Emphasize how much previous World Cup experience is going to help both these managers this summer. Jürgen Klinsmann, of course, playing in three World Cups, coaching in one. Bowe, who played in four. Even one of Jürgen Klinsmann's assistants, uh, Andreas Herzog, played in a couple of World Cups for Austria. And here's Lee Kyun Ho. He's been a thorn in the side consistently in this first half. Davis they attracted a crowd and eventually won the free kick yeah but you talk about the evolution of Brad Davis he didn't have that in between his ears understanding three four players coming on to him having the understanding the best I can do here is to draw a foul that's been the evolution of Brad Davis from MLS now to the international level we saw it a little bit last year in World Cup qualifying he's doing it again today Zussi again seeking out Davis. Even some aerial prowess. He won the header but couldn't keep the ball in play. You think Brad Davis is on that plane to Brazil, Taylor Twelman? I think he's got a legit chance. And I said it at this point last year, because of his commitment to fitness and playing both sides of the ball, we saw him at Azteca in the World Cup qualifier come on in a defensive situation five years ago. Brad Davis isn't in the equation, it isn't even in the talk. And then obviously that left foot, imagine that in the 65th minute against yeah. Ghana. You need that to come off the bench. I think he's got a great chance. In a tight World Cup game where perhaps a set piece could be the difference. You know, Jürgen Klinsmann is thinking about that. He's also thinking about is this uh, robust career team who really made a game of it since going down early. Most of the traffic at the moment directed towards Nick Romando's goal. Now then, ESPN FC is our studio show. If you haven't seen it yet, well, it is the place for comprehensive coverage of soccer from around the world. Next show uh, is Sunday at midnight Eastern on ESPN2 and also live on the Watch ESPN app. And the Sunday show will always chock a block full of highlights. All the big uh, league action. Plenty of it earlier today featuring uh, the United States players doing pretty well. Wins for Tim Howard for Everton. So Josie Altidore for Sunderland, despite not being on the score sheet. Jeff Cameron Stoke getting a win against Manchester United. Free kick is killed, far post. And was open there, the shot is on. 
by the United States, perhaps a touch fortunate to escape damage there because there were a couple of open players inside the penalty area. Well, right before the set piece was taken, Lee Ho had words with Park Young Woo, and this was set up, and he lost his runner, Kyle Beckham, in back post. Listen, South Korea, they haven't had many chances going forward, but when they have, they've come off the set pieces. The US are lucky that fell to a center back there, and Kim Ju Young with the shot. And now the corner has curled out of play before coming back in. Referee from Costa Rica today, Hugo Cruz. This is the 45th game of Jurgen Klinsmann's tenure. As the United States head coach, only the second time his team has played here, though. The stop up center, he'd lost last time. It's only his second game in charge against Costa Rica. But the US haven't won in three games here at the stop up center. A draw against Chile and a loss against Honduras back in 2010. And here's Wombolowski on the go. Donovan! Oh, it was a matter of inches. Still the attack alive, though. Parkhurst joining the build-up. Intelligent ball for Zussi, but he can't haul it in, and the opportunity slips away. And Klinsman yesterday in training talked about Omar Gonzalez, when he does play that 30, 40-yard ball forward, have it with the purpose. And that's just a good chipped-in ball that allows Chris Wondolowski to turn his defender. Unlucky for Landon Donovan. Zussi. Wondolowski. Seven goals in his first six years as a pro, Chris Wondolowski. 72 in his last four years. And it's one of the more remarkable stories in MLS. From developmental player to designated player, and you even talk about last year was a down year for Chris Wondolowski and a lot of fans. Yeah, he scored 11 goals. Eight of those were game winners. And you know, that trade last year between Robbie Rogers and Mike McGee involving the team that play here, the Los Angeles Galaxy, is often talked about. But I think back in 2009, Wondolowski and Cam Weaver was the trade between San Jose and Houston. Who got the better of that move? Do I need to answer that? 72 goals, great turnaround. I think what's been interesting today, though, for Chris Wondolowski is looking at the relationship with Landon Donovan playing underneath. This is only their third start together. We saw that in the Gold Cup run and in those two starts previous to this. There was five goals between those two. Now in their third start, six goals between them. Final minute of the first half. Whatever you do, stay with us at halftime because we're going to let Taylor and Alexi loose to talk about whatever you want to talk about. What aren't you going to talk about, Taylor? Because you're going to talk about most things, you and Alexi. Yeah, both Alexi and I are strong on social media, and we've asked a lot of questions, and the most talked about things are Clint Dempsey, Michael Bradley coming back, and the form of Josie Altidore. It's all set up, isn't it, to be uh, quite the year. Here's Wondolowski. He's looked to danger every time he's got involved in that penalty area. Here he is again. It's a looser ball, though, this time. That will do it. Chris Wondolowski's early strike is the one that separates the two sides here. The United States had plenty of defending to do to protect that lead, though, as the first half unfolded. But so far, so good for Jurgen Klinsmann. United States won, South Korea nil coming up at halftime. Taylor and Alexi will discuss all the big moves, including Michael Bradley and Clint Dempsey. And Josie Altidore, what next for him? It's coming up next. Don't go away.